Good morning, friends. Very, very interesting paper just published in Nature by Philip uh, Zwierski, uh, Mount Sinai University, New York. So this paper is finally uh, shedding some light on uh, the mechanisms that are linking stress, acute mental stress, with immune function, or, or better, immune dysfunction. Again, that mental stress and immune dysfunction and inflammation were strictly linked, related, it was well known, but we did not know how. So this paper, of course, in rodents, so we have to be careful in interpreting and especially translating uh, animal data into human interventions. But nonetheless, I believe that these are ancestral protective mechanisms that have been evolved over centuries uh, for protecting mammals and other animals from danger. So in nature, acute stress typically is due to danger. There is a lion who is trying to attack a giraffe or a gazelle, and this acute stress caused by this danger is shaping uh, the metabolism of the animal very quickly, very rapidly. And there is a shift in the immune system because if the animal get hurt, is damaged by the lion, then you know the immune system has to be ready to act and act quickly to reduce the risk of uh, infections and to cope with the damage. Now, what Philip found is that when animals are exposed to acute stress, there are two major adaptation. One is that the neutrophils that are the most common uh, uh, leukocytes, uh, they move from the bone marrow to the blood and to the uh, sites of injury. So there is a recruitment of neutrophils from the bone marrow, they leave the bone marrow, they travel through the blood to the site of injury. The second one goes in the opposite direction. The monocytes and lymphocytes, instead of there are again, you know, two sub, subtypes of immune cells, these, the neutrophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes are the most common uh, leukocytes, white blood cells. The, the monocytes and the lymphocytes, they, they move instead of in the opposite direction from the lympho nodes and spleen, they move into the bone marrow. They go back to the bone, the bone marrow. Now, this is very interesting because, again, the neutrophils, uh, they are super active uh, soldiers, leukocytes, with a lot of nasty granules that when they are released, they, they relieve, they release, you know, devastating amount of cytotoxic um, molecules. Uh, they when when people are when, when animals they are stressed with acute stress they go basically to the sites of injuries and this explains what we already knew that people uh, that have uh, inflamed atherosclerotic plaques they have plaques they have they have a higher risk of having an acute coronary syndrome and heart attack when they are stressed. You know, you have seen some of these movies where you know, someone gets very angry and he has a heart attack. 
Well, you know, these data are in some way explaining why, because if you are stressed and you have already an inflamed plaque in your coronary arteries or, or in your brain, these uh, neutrophils that are moving uh, from the bone marrow to the plaque, they are increasing the uh, inflammation within the plaque and inflammation makes the plaque you know, more unstable. So there is an erosion of the, uh, of the endothelium with a higher risk of having a, 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 a blood clot that is closing the artery and therefore you have a, a myocardial infarction. On the other side, in, in contrast, basically, Philip has shown that uh, these uh, uh, movement of uh, monocytes and lymphocytes that are the director of the orchestra, of the immune system orchestra, uh, from the lymph nodes to the bone marrow is detrimental because it impairs immunity in this experiment against SARS-CoV-2 and influenza infection. And what is beautiful of this paper is that not only he has described this opposite movement of neutrophils and monocytes and lymphocytes, but it also in some way uh, uh, explained how it works, what are the mechanisms. For the neutrophils, it looks like is due to an activation of motor neurons that basically are causing these rapid, within an hour, there is the new, this neutrophil mobilization from the bone marrow to the uh, peripheral tissues, okay? Through the production of neutrophil attractive chemokines produced by, activated by these motor uh, neuron circuits. In contrast, the movement of, uh, the, of uh, the aggression of uh, monocytes and lymphocytes from secondary lymphoid organs to the bone marrow is mediated by the ACTH cortisol system. So acute stress is activating the paraventricular hypothalamus centers, neurons, that are releasing CRH, the corticotropin releasing hormone that is activated, activating the production of ACTH in the hypothesis that is then activating the production of cortisol in the adrenal gland. And this is mediating through the production of specific chemokines, the homing of neutrophils and lymphocytes to the bone marrow. So very, very, very interesting paper. And it's very interesting because uh, unlike in animals in nature where typically stress is acute, but then the animals go back to their normal, quiet, serene life, in our modern society, the acute stress becomes very often chronic stress. We are living in this very busy uh, metro uh, metropolitan areas uh, bombarded by negative uh, TV and media uh, news. Uh, we, have, we live more and more in this uh, uh, society where there is uh, more inequality, um, more stress due to lack of uh, education and uh, philosophical teachings and uh, other techniques that can help us to live a more serene and peaceful life. And uh, as I try to explain in, uh, in my books, uh, in Italian, the La Grande Via, and uh, in English, the path to longevity. There are entire chapters 
where I try to outline what signs tell us about how we can control stress, how we can control our emotions to live a better life, to promote well being, mental well being, emotional well being, spiritual well being, because all these are interconnected, as you can clearly see in this paper, with our metabolism and with our immunity and with our inflammatory conditions. And, uh, and uh, as I try to explain in these books and in some videos that I already have recorded, uh, basically there are a number of things that you can do in your life for improving these uh, mental, emotional, spiritual well-being from some mindfulness practice that you can do not only at home, but, you know, when you are walking in a park, in, you know, in, 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 a, in a forest, uh, on the ocean, uh, and there are um, uh, some respiratory techniques that you can learn and implement in your life that have huge effect in controlling some of these uh, sympathetic nervous system cortisol, cortisol um, networks. And there are also philosophical studies that you can uh, start, that you can learn uh, to change your vision, your approach to life so that you are able to cope better with the uh, unavoidable uh, negative uh, uh, events that normally occur in life. You know, it's impossible that there is always a beautiful uh, sunny day. There are times in life where there are storms coming. And so if you have, you know, these correct philosophical approach to life when you are uh, when there is a storm that is approaching there are philosophical way to minimize the damage and sometimes even to improve yourself during these difficult time, times to become more resilient more happy more uh, with more understanding of the beautiful things that lives can, can uh, bring to a healthy human being that uh, is developing and growing not only uh, physically, but also mentally and spiritually. Anyway, thank you for listening and uh, I'll uh, see you soon with a new video.